Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice, Print, Roleplay. In this video, I'm going to give you a few tips that can help 3D printing and modeling programs run a lot better on your PC. Alright, let's get into it. So first things first, I do apologize to any Apple users, but this video is going to be focused on Windows PCs. Alright, so with that out of the way, the first thing we're going to do is go down to the Windows search bar and type in the word power. Then we're going to go to where it says power and sleep settings and click on that. Now in this first window is where you can tell the computer how long you want it to run before it puts the monitor or the entire computer to sleep. Personally, I have this set up so that the screen never turns off and the computer never goes to sleep. Just because if I leave for a short break to take care of the kids or something, when I come back I want the computer to be ready to go so I can get stuff done as quickly as possible. But it's really up to your preference. Once you have these set, we're going to go down to additional power settings. Now in my case you can see that I already have some presets in here. Some of them were default from Windows and the rest were added when I installed the drivers for the hardware that I'm using. So in my case I'm going to go with this power plan which is high performance for my processor because it's going to be more specific to the hardware that I'm using and should theoretically give me better performance. If you have a specific high performance option like this that's probably going to be your best bet. If you don't and you have a generic high performance option go with that one. Now, if you don't have any presets in here, or at least none that give you the impression of high performance, then go up to where it says Create Power Plan. Now, here's where you can create a new power plan based on your needs. These are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll run through them real quick. Balanced is going to give you a good balance between the power your computer is using versus the performance it can give you. Whereas Power Saver is going to save power at the expense of giving you a little bit less performance out of your computer. And then high performance is obviously the opposite, where it's going to consume more power but give you the most performance out of your computer. So my recommendation would be to go with high performance, because most programs that you're going to use with 3D printers are going to be pretty power heavy. You can change the name if you want to, and then just hit next. And then make sure whatever power plan you just created is the one you have selected here. Next up, on your keyboard, we're going to hit Control, Alt, and Delete at the same time. And then select Task Manager, and you should see this window. From here, you can go ahead and maximize this window so that you can see all the information displayed. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Task Manager, it's a really helpful tool to let you see in real time what kind of impact different programs are having on your computer. Now, there are three values we want to look at here. First is going to be CPU, next is going to be memory, and then to a lesser extent, GPU. Really, the two most important are going to be CPU, which is going to be your main processing unit. It's what kind of thinks through all the different programs and different tasks you're asking your computer to do. Then memory or RAM. Now, in very simple terms, the purpose of your memory is just to pull up information that the CPU needs to run a task. And how quickly that information gets pulled depends on how much memory you have. And then the job of the GPU is to process graphics, which for most people is going to be video games. So if you want to play games at a really high frame rate or with really high settings, you're going to want a pretty powerful GPU. Now, for people who are going to do a lot of 3D modeling or 3D rendering, having a powerful GPU is really helpful. But for most people that are just going to be using slicers, only your CPU and memory are going to be important. And I'm going to demonstrate that by slicing a model here. So as soon as I hit slice, if we go back to the task manager, you can see CPU jumps really high versus GPU stays pretty low until it finishes. And then we get a little bit of a bump on the GPU while it's displaying the different colors and things in the slicer itself. But during the actual slice, the CPU is doing all of the heavy lifting with the GPU doing pretty much nothing. Alright, so with that test out of the way, the first thing that you can do to give your processor more power to devote to your slicer is going to be here in Task Manager. Just look for any programs that are listed under where it says Apps here, and see if there's anything running that's using a lot of CPU or memory. If it is and it's not important, go ahead and close it out. So like Chrome, for example, is notorious for using a lot of memory, go ahead and close that until you're done with your slicer. And just a quick word of caution here, I would recommend not closing anything listed under background processes just because you may close something that your computer needs to run correctly. Alright, from here we can do a little bit more to help our CPU by going to startup. This is going to be a list of different programs that start when your computer does. I recommend taking a good look through this list and decide if there's any programs that would be running that you don't need. Now most of these programs are only going to have a minimal impact on your RAM and your CPU, but in my opinion, they are going to have an impact, and if they are running and you don't need them, then they shouldn't be running. Now that being said, if you don't know if something should be running or not, then go ahead and type the name of it into your search engine, and from there you should be able to get a good idea of what it does and whether or not you need it running. And then anything you want to disable, just right click on it and hit disable. Now the last thing I want to talk about is not going to be an easy fix, but if it is a problem it can have a huge impact on your computer's performance, so it's something we definitely want to look into. And that's going to be how much memory or RAM your computer has. The easiest way to check that is going to be to go down to your search box again, we're going to type in this, which will bring up this PC, then we're going to right click on that box, and hit properties. In this window you want to look at installed RAM. 
Most programs recommend having at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. So if you have less than 8, I would definitely look into upgrading that. The good news is that when it comes to working on computers, upgrading RAM is one of the easiest things you can do. The bad news is that it does require that you crack open your computer, and on some laptops that can be really difficult. So if you determine that a RAM upgrade is necessary for your PC, it's up to you if you want to look up some tutorials and then determine from there if you want to do it yourself or take it to a local professional. And that's it. Hopefully those tips will help you increase the performance for all of your 3D printing and modeling needs. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And if you like the work that I'm doing here and want to support my channel even more, check out my Patreon link down below. And that gives me a perfect segue to say thank you to Brady Marsden and 5 Minute Vids. Your support has a direct impact on the quality of content that I can produce and how often I can produce it. Seriously, thank you so much for joining my Patreon and supporting the channel. Alright, now let's go print something.